Hello everyone, it's Richard here, and today this video is about the BQ Hepastos 2 3D printer. This is a kit build 3D printer, so it comes in a lot of parts from BQ. Uh, it's very new, they're just launching it now. Um, I had the pleasure to have been able to build one of these up and go through the process of assembly, construction, using the printer, feeding back to BQ a little bit about the machine as a pre-release beta before they go into full production with this with this unit. So it's been really interesting uh, going through the process of building this up and I'll go through some of the stages a little bit later on um, showing you what I did to actually assemble the machine, how straightforward it is. It is and it is a very straightforward build. You can build this machine up in around two to three hours with no experience whatsoever of 3D printers and just simple IKEA type instruction ability. So as long as you can do that, two or three hours you'll have no problem. Uh, any expert 3D printer builders or anyone that's familiar with this type of uh, construction will be able to do it in two hours or under. So this is a fairly straightforward, uh, well put together machine using some great components which I'll show you some close-ups in a minute. Um, and I've got the thing uh, fully assembled now, the printer is fully assembled and I've been using it for a few days uh, ironing out some of the some of the bugs of um, calibration settings that sort of thing and getting a few prints done so the one thing I'll mention straight away is that this 3D printer is targeted at a certain quality and price point which is great and it is very very high quality it's different just because it looks like a Prusher i3 and some of the others that you'll see out there and even the Hepestos 1 which had a, a lot of uh, 3D printed parts uh, nothing wrong with that at all, at all but for this version they've gone for fully CNC machined and um, uh, stamped metal, form metal, laser cut metal parts so everything is is pretty much solid there's, there's only one 3D printed part and that's the little fan duct at the bottom here uh, to duct the air through to the thing that's the only 3D, part, 3D printed part I can find um, so if we turn the machine on it's very quiet, doesn't have any fan noise at all and it has a little uh, screen up here uh, it's a full graphical screen, it's not a touch screen, it still uses the normal jog dial and the push button so it'll start making a little bit more noise when I go to the temperature and I ask it to heat to 220 degrees C which is just getting it up to temperature so in a minute the fans will come on and that's about the noise level you get um, with, with the operation of the, of the printer before you start printing. Um, fairly straightforward, hasn't got a heated bed now that's something that a lot of people will not like they will not like the fact that it doesn't have a heated bed and it's quite a large build platform this is bigger, it's about an A4 size, I think it's actually exactly A4 sized um, build platform, so it's 297 by 210 and about 200, uh, 205 I think uh, on the Z, on the, on the height. So it's quite a large build area and that's quite unusual that it doesn't have a, a heated bed because if you're going to print in PLA or, well, you can't really print in any other, any other uh, materials like ABS or PET because you're going to have problems with adhesion but you can print in obviously in PLA you can put down various coatings you could put build tack down you could put blue tape on here I've got a coating of uh, Wolfbite Nano which is a surface coating for glass which turns into an ever so slightly sticky um, almost like the back of a post-it note the sticky sticky back of a post-it note on the top of the glass which is really great for printing without uh, without any any heat so on, on a non-heated bed the other thing this 3d printer has been designed for and works very well with is thermoplastic elastomers so TPUs like Filiflex and to be honest this printer is fantastic for Filiflex and other types of uh, rubberized filaments it's really I think it's where the printer should should be uh, should it should be best suited so if you want a TPU thermoplastic elastomer printer I can't think of a better printer uh, at the moment to use and I'll give you some examples of the prints I've done with it I've spent a lot of time with TPU filaments they're they're fairly difficult to print they're very elasticy obviously and unless you have the extruded mechanism absolutely spot on it's it's quite a difficult process. I've designed printers dedicated to TPU and extruders and I've used all sorts of other all sorts of types of extruders with V-groove gears, pinch gears, all sorts of different things. 
what BQ have done, and I'll show you some close-ups, they've actually made a very well supported extruder drive mechanism from, from the start right the way through to the nozzle. Uh, and it really is very well supported. I don't think I've seen another, a better supported system all the way through uh, an extruder uh, setup. So this is perfectly suited for TPU and any type of elastic type filaments. And it, and it really, really, really does work. So the, the prints you get off of, off of here with Filiflex are the cleanest I've ever seen, hands down, without any problems. Um, they come out absolutely super clean, no strings, no problems just really 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 nicely nice done prints and you can feed through almost as much filament as you like you can feed through sections of filament you can feed through um, reels of filament uh, this is a little dragon it's a rainbow dragon printed perfectly in filiflex and this is the finest filiflex print I've managed to achieve and it was basically with um, it wasn't the standard settings I did have my own settings for, for Philip, uh, filiflex on here but after a bit of tuning, that's the quality you're getting. And it's printing at 50, this was at 50 millimeters per second uh, print speed. So that's not slow. This is printing at very fast print speeds for this type of uh, material. So that's great. So for me, this is an absolutely fantastic printer for Filiflex. Uh, and I'm going to be carrying on using it for, for Filiflex printing. Um, it does come with uh, PLA and I've printed PLA parts. They print okay, they're nice and strong, and they print print fine, use a bit of a brim, maybe a raft even, uh, and don't go too big, you know, biggest sort of things I've printed still have low surface areas on their base, and they print fine, they print very high quality, the z-axis is very very nice on this, works very well and gives good quality results, but without that heated bed you're going to struggle to print very large parts that aren't going to lift off the bed or cause cause curling and that sort of thing. So um, what more can I say? The printer itself, the setup was very straightforward, fairly easy to use on the on the screen. You've only got a very limited number of options. Everything's done from the SD card you put in the top here. Um, I've connected it through obviously um, via the USB cable you can put that on and control it with Prontface or any other type of normal user interfaces and it has a modified, quite highly modified version of Marlin running on there. Now the only other criticism I've got at the moment, and this is a beta release, so the team at BQ are working still heavily on refining the firmware, uh, is that it actually runs a little bit slow. The, the, the firmware is a little bit sluggish, a little bit slow, and I can't get the sort of top speeds I know this machine can do. This machine can do higher travel speeds and it can print faster and smoother than the current firmware that it's got loaded into it is enabling it to do. So that said, uh, a little bit more tweaking on there and it's going to be fantastic for a lot of different things, but I think it's a full effects printer. This is really, really good for any type of TPU based filament extrusion. And I think if you're looking in the, mar in the market for that sort of thing, especially for education um, and other, other types of industries where you're going to need to be able to print uh, TPU then this really is a fantastic printer. Uh, whether or not you can just buy the, the extruder on its own, well, I think actually the whole printer is, is a nice setup. It's a good value for money and will give you a good experience. Uh, it's very, you can hear that it's actually been on, it's heated up to temperature now. Uh, let's start a print. So we'll go, to the, we'll go to the SD card and we will choose We'll choose our dragon and that's about the noise it makes it's quite quiet doesn't make too much noise and really uh, it's quite an ins inconspicuous printer it'll just sit there in the background printing z-axis a little, little bit slow because it's using just standard lead screws on the back although they are driven very nicely and it does produce quite a nice motion it's got auto bed leveling, which is quite nice. Uh, it's also got an automatic um, Z height adjustment, which I turned off straight away because I really don't uh, believe in automatic Z height adjustments while the print's going on. So get everything nice and flat and you'll be able to print really well with this machine. So that's about it, really. It's, uh, it's a great printer. I think it's fantastic for Filiflex. 
I'll be interested to see how the guys from BQ, how they update the firmware uh, to get it running a little bit more smoother um, and how well it's received when it's launched, which is very, very soon. So thank you ever so much for listening and I'll be updating you with a bit more about the BQ Hepestos 2 very soon. Thank you.